chapter one, we learned that the consciousness is made up of two parts, correct? The consciousness is who it is that we are as a soul in this incarnation. And we are one. We are whole. However, as we appear in this reality, we do appear to have two aspects, well, really three, but two primary aspects, that of the conscious, which is the thinking aspect of who it is that we are, the aspect that has the ideas and that has the vision, and then the subconscious. The subconscious is the womb of creation. It is the mechanism innate within us all that makes manifest that which we think on and feel on and truly that which we desire. The mechanics of manifestation truly are contained within the subconscious. Most of us live very reactively and within our conscious thinking part, we're not mindful of how it is that we think or the thoughts that we entertain. We do not intentionally and purposefully craft our vision, our thinking, our ideas in order to impress upon the subconscious, which ultimately out pictures that which we think about. It is the subconscious that has all the magic. It is the subconscious that is the female aspect of the conscious. It is the consciousness rather. And it is the conscious that is the male. These two aspects make up who it is that we are as a soul and a consciousness. Your emotions or your feelings, which this is the secret, Neville Goddard tells us, your emotions are the vehicles through which the conscious impregnates or impresses upon the subconscious. You can think all day long about whatever you want to think about in life, but unless you have a complementary feeling, it is not delivered to the subconscious. She doesn't hear about it. She doesn't receive it. It's always the feeling that drives the impregnation, if you will, or drives the impression of the subconscious. And so just as we are living in an unchecked way with our thinking, what are you thinking about? What are you watching on TV? You know, you're thinking about that too. Who are you listening? Just yammer away at you. You're thinking about that. We are also living in an unchecked manner with our feelings. Usually we think first, it precedes the feeling. And then the feeling comes in alignment with whatever you're thinking. It's probably going to match what you're thinking. And now you are impregnating. Now you're fertilizing. Now you're creating what you're going to experience in your life tomorrow. The undisciplined person does not pay attention to how they think. The undisciplined person does not pay attention to how they feel. And the undisciplined person person is living there for a life of chaos and with evidences, again, that are hit or miss. Sometimes it works, but a lot of times it doesn't. And it's because you're not paying attention to these aspects of yourself. He that loveth his wife loveth himself and they shall become one flesh. The thinking aspect of who it is that we are loves the receiver, the subconscious. And in fact, they mate together. And in doing this intentionally, the husband loves himself because he knows he impregnates and creates his reality. And so he loves himself by thinking and feeling intentionally. He that loveth his wife loveth himself and they shall become one flesh. And also so powerful. Don't let me get derailed on the energy and the power of this truth. To him that hath, it is given. And to him that hath not, it is taken away. What does this mean? Again, we have to remember, and it's okay to discuss this more than once. We need to hear this. To him that has, more is given. Has what? comments. Has what? What do you have to have in order to get more? More being more of what you want, more of the benefit and more of the prosperity. What do you have to have? You have to have the knowledge, the thinking, and the feeling, the belief, the vibration that I am already that. I have within me the wellspring 
of all the things I seek to create in my life. I am that. I am that I am is what I am. He that has this knowledge of self, the inner magician, if you will, more is given, more more blessings are given, more benefit is given, more prosperity, health and wellness to the person that knows who they are and that they control how it's created. You dig? However, to him that hath not, more is taken away. Hath not what? Hath not the sense of himself or herself to him or her that believes they're living reactively that life is happening to them i just happen to be in this crazy nation where all these weird politics are happening i just happen to be surrounded by this weird family nobody understands me i just happen to have this bank account with negative numbers i don't know where i'm going i just happen to have this job that i hate how many people do we know have feelings like this because they don't understand that they create their reality. So they have not the understanding. And to him that hath not, it is taken away. Just more of the same. More of the same. If we just understood this principle, we could shift our life on its, on its face, simply. By just walking around the planet in the energy of being exactly who it is that we are. Neville Goddard says, believing and being are one. That which you think you also vibrate in alignment with your beingness. They are one. So to the person who understands who they are and vibrates with the I am that I am, the divine nature of who it is that I am, more is given. More is always given. The blessings flow in effortlessly as you flow in the energy of creative spirit. Amen? That's how it works. That was chapter one. Get out of here. We learned a lot in chapter one. The Enlightened Entrepreneur is a live online eight-week course specifically designed to teach heart-led practitioners how to launch, establish, and scale their own highly successful spiritual businesses. If you're longing to really step into your purpose and reach the next level in your work and in your life, please consider joining us so you can turn your gifts and your talents into a powerful service that you can sell.